Tier list. Tier list. Oh, Z42 comes first. Shit, Z42. What was it? It was a German gunboat. Roughly Harogumo type conceal. It has 6 game Hydra, which is pretty strong. It had short burst smoke, unlike uh, Z52. I think it had pretty good DPM as well. Not the best HE DPM, if I remember, but the AP DPM was pretty strong. Yeah, Z42 HE DPM is pretty garbage. Uh, how's the fires per minute on it? It's not that good of a fire. Actually, it's a pretty terrible fire starter. It's it's a sh surprisingly terrible fire starter. Barely better than a Z52 because it's got 5% fire chance on the guns. It does have 26mm base pen though, <clears throat> which is an advantage, but the shells are extremely light. That's really the issue. The shells are super light. They're 105mm guns. Pool. It's a pretty clunky. Well, handling is okay. It's just a decently fast 36.5. The problem is it's got terrible conceal though. So it can't really utilize the 6 game hydro unless you're dumb enough to like push into the hydro. IFHE for the better pen is an option. Ah, uh, where would we put it? I mean, this is randoms, this is randoms. This is for randoms. We can comment on it for ranked as well, but this is mostly going to be randoms. The torpedoes, what are they? 10km torps, 100 second cooldown, 62 knots. They're okay, they're not that good, they're okay. I think it might be a B tier for me. I think it might be a B tier for me. The fast smokes are actually really useful right now with all the carriers. You can disengage a lot, like you can quick quick cycle smokes, which is a great advantage to for going dark. And uh, the hydro is useful with all the subs. I would probably put it as as kind of a weak B, not a strong B. I'd say it's a weak B. It's it's not the end of the world bad, but it's eh. Yeah. But did the, did the thing have better pen angles on it? I'm not sure if I remember that. I think it had... S which one had the better pen angles? No, Z42 didn't have better pen angles. But it had an 80mm threshold on the AP, which means you can shoot AP on DDs and do quite a lot of damage with it. The ZF6 is the one that gets the improved pen angles. It's kind of like a German Harugumo, yes. Except it's Hydro, so you don't blow up in smoke the same way as Harugumo does. But then on the flip side, you don't really do nearly the same damage as Harugumo does. Like, uh, your, your HEDPM is like 50k less or something than, than Harugumo, so you end up losing a lot. Actually, it's a lot worse than that. Never mind. Harugumo does 50% more damage. That's how bad it is. Yeah, it's 80k less. But better AP? Uh, no, your AP DPM is worse than Harogumos as well. So it's... yeah. Gearing? Probably a C tier in the current year. I mean, Gearing is one of those ships that... It's nice in a division. It's nice in a division, don't get me wrong. But playing it in the current meta, Gearing... Uh, the gunpower kind of sucks. The angles suck. The torpedoes are pretty good, but they're really long cooldown, and everyone is running Hydro nowadays. So you struggle to get much out of them. Gearing is a ship that you basically need to be playing in a division to have fun. If you're not, if you're playing it solo, you're just suffering. You're just suffering. It's, it used to be a really strong ship, and I mean, leg mod gearing still gets good conceal. But, no, it's just... I think I feel like gearing is a victim in the current meta. It's so easy to dumpster. Just so easy to dumpster. Gdansk, probably easiest here, honestly. Um, radar, great gun arcs. I uh, can farm everything. It's the smokes, the torps, shit tons of HP. Then it had an absurd amount of HP on it. Like, there's no real downsides on it besides maybe well it's it's clunky in the turning circle but the rudder shift is still good and it's really fucking fast it really fast it likes ap but i mean it's still so strong at kind of farming everything 
the DPM, everything. Holland? Uh, it's kind of down there with the gearing nowadays. It's it's a torp boats fucking suck in the current meta. Torpedo boats are just just bad. I wish it was a better ship, but the AA has been nerfed and power crept with all the changes to AA. Um, super CVs exist, and you don't do anything against them. The gun, the front and back gun angles is is, is suffering. Forward firing death charges is very hit and miss because if you have to run straight at the DD. Um, you have to run straight at the DD to drop the death charges on him, but then he's shotgunning you. So when you start evading, your death charges are flying all over the way because you're fucking trying to dodge and shotgun. It's it's just bad. Hayate that didn't get the buffs that the Russians got, where they buffed it with uh, they gave it smoke and reload booster, which is a pretty cool gimmick. But honestly, on on EU or like the normal servers, Hayat is just it here. It's it combines the worst aspects of a Shima and a Haragomo. It's got terrible conceal. It just I just think it sucks, honestly. I just think it's it's just a terrible pick in the current meta. Sherman is easiest here. Um it doesn't have the radar, but it's got completely absurd DPM, completely absurd a shell velocity. It's got hydro, it's got that long smoke. The torpedo power is its greatest weakness, but the firepower compensates so heavily for it that uh, honestly, it's 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 a no-brainer. The thing just does so much fucking damage. The thing just does absurd damage. Well, it's very easy to land the damage as well. And then, of course, it has the sap, which is just... just a really good ship. Did you say great torpedoes? No, I said it doesn't have much in terms of torpedoes. It's got those awkward torp angle torps that are generally pretty useful. Can save your bacon, but generally pretty bad. Honestly, the biggest benefit of the Sherman torpedoes is that uh, people in people are bad enough at the game that they, for some reason, try to use those torps against you instead of shooting you. I, I have that happen to me often when I'm playing a DD and I'm fighting a Sherman. Instead of shooting me, he, he spends time lining up those terrible tarps and loses out on all the damage. So instead of just killing me, I get to kill him. So I'm glad the torpedoes exist on the ship because it's a great balancing factor for the player base. Summers, it's a torpedo boat with no gun power. I mean, gearing is at least more useful than Summers. Summer, it's, it's an American ship, yeah, it's like, shish. Kaba, current meta. No, it's just D tier. Um, it's got, I mean, you you see super unicums and unicums play the ship and get some good damage in on it, but that doesn't mean it's actually a good ship. It's so easy to dumpster. It's so easy to shit on. There's a million ways that that this thing can suffer. The, one of my favorite features is queuing up in a Kaba and getting a cyclone. <laughs> you you're instantly dead. Or. Uh, just having to fight the uh, Soviet cruisers that arm on your belt, because you got a thick belt that arms their AP. Uh, elbing shits, even elbing shits on Kaba easily, like, it's just, it's just bad. It's just objectively bad. Druid? Strong, very one-dimensional. Um, pretty strong AP tier, I'd say. Um, Druid, of course, shoots only two front guns, shoots AP. Got Hydro, got that Crawling Smoke. It's really, really good at shitting on other DDs. Uh, even if you go nose in against the Druid, he can, it just breaks your guns. Because the guns are really accurate and the shell velocity is really good. Uh, but it's not really that good against much else. Yeah, you can smash some Citadels on, on cruisers if they give you broadside. But you don't really have stopping power because you don't have any torps. So if someone just decides to push you, uh, well, then you need to run. That, that's it. And if you're forced to kite and farm, you kind of suck at it because your guns are in the front. It's it's a one-dimensional... Oh, it was the short smoke, not crawling. But I mean, it does a shit ton of damage with the guns, but it's very, very one-dimensional. It does one thing and it does it well, but that's pretty much all it does. Sherman has the same HE DPM as uh, gearing. Sherman has the same HE DPM as gearing. Yeah, but uh, the, the arcs are completely different. The turret traverse is completely different. More importantly, the arcs are completely different. Uh, flight time to 12 kilometers for a gearing is 11.4 seconds. Flight time to 12 kilometers from a Sherman is 7.4 seconds. So you take the flight time of the Sherman and you add 50% and you still don't reach gearing's flight time. That's how bad gearing's flight times are. The arcs suck. The, the ship sucks at landing shells with. And uh, Sherman can just farm DDs across the map. 
something that you can't do on on the gearing at all you can really only farm bbs with it and even then you don't have uh you don't have the sap which is a great weakness and then there's the fact that i think you had what was your fire chance yeah your fire chance is five percent sherman's fire chance is nine percent so sherman has almost twice the fire chance of the gearing uh, which obviously means you start significantly more fires it's not even comparable it's not even comparable Marceau, easy S tier, uh, open water gunboat, pretty decent AA on it. I think it had a fair bit of flak on it. Where is, where is it? I think it had a fair bit of flak on it. Uh, four, yeah, and I think you, you can buy default with defensive AA. You don't really don't want it, but uh, a lot of dumb CVs tend to eat your flak, which is nice. And more importantly, you're so stupidly fast that they generally they miss uh, your attacks on you. You got 9 cam torps, absolutely absurd DPM on these guns. Um, the shell arcs are not nearly as good as the Kleber ones, but you have more usable torpedoes because of the range. You're really strong at YOLOing. And of course, you got French saturation. You got better concealed than Kleber. So, yeah, I don't know what build we're running, but yeah, 7 cam conceal with this speed and this firepower is just. Obnoop. Uh, yeah, if you we're probably running. Yeah, this build is fine. Uh, with this build, we got, what, 5 flak? Yeah, with this build, we got 5 flak for 2k pop. Then you pop defensive AA on top. Surprisingly useful against carriers, because they tend to fly straight into it. Um, but Marceau, with the French saturation and all the health and everything going for it, it's just it's just stupid. It's it's an easy S2. Easy S2 ship, it's, it's very, very good. And it's got uh, the highest HE DPM in the game, and the second highest AP DPM in the game. On top of being this incredible gun platform that's stupid fast, saturated, and so forth. So, it's just really, really good. Lucian? I haven't played it. I've seen it get played quite a bit. I've seen Sep DPM play, Sep play it, and I've seen a couple others play it. it. It has... The weakness is, of course, it doesn't have a smoke. But it seems pretty consistent with the Hydra and the Torps and just the firepower. It's got really flat arcs. It, it's more of a farming ship. Um, and the AP is actually surprisingly usable on it. I, I would say it's probably a B tier ship, significantly more useful than these. I think I would rather play Lucian than any of these for sure. Uh, it's just overall really consistent ship. I'd, I'd say put it into B. Did Flamo say Druid is just a, a good all-rounder? No, I say it's a very specialized ship. It does one thing in particular, but it does it really well. Ragnar. Easy S tier. Um, very bo I would say pr very boring playstyle on the Ragnar. Um, you kite and you spam HE. That's pretty much it. Um, you have your radar to shit on DDs. You got stupid gun arcs. You're a cruiser without a citadel. Um, but it's really obnoxious to deal with. And hit hitting a good Ragnar player sucks. And he will just farm and farm and farm. And your DDs can't really go anywhere because he zones them out. And uh, Ragnar is just a pain in the ass. It's just a pain in the ass. Inherently underpowered uh, is the meme, of course, but generally it's... Yeah. Delmi. Yeah, Delmi is a tough one. Where's our Delmi? Where's our Delmi? Wait, why don't we have Delmi here? Did we reset or did we just not buy it? Maybe we might have bought it on the other server. I think we bought it on the other server. Delmi. It's better than Kamba, but that's not really putting the bar high. It's got that 50mm plate. The issue is, of course, it's kind of a trade-off. It arms a lot of shit that you wouldn't normally arm. Your concealment is not that good. Your speed is pretty okay. The damage output, I think the arcs were pretty good on the Delny, so it was, it was a bit better than what you'd normally have, but the problem is the DPM is pretty damn underwhelming. In fact, your raw HE DPM is roughly the same as Shima causes. You have 137, Shima has 135. So, the DPS is sad. Um, on the flip side, it handles significantly better than... Uh, actually, yeah, than the, Del than the Kaba. Kaba has that terrible, terrible... 11.1 second rudder shift. They only has 5 second rudder shift, which just makes it better. It's also got 600 better concealed than the Kaba, which helps it a lot. Um, it's got more horsepowers per per ton, 
so it's got more juice to it it accelerates better overall i would say it's kind of like a kaba kaba light the problem somewhat there is of course you lose a fair bit of dpm in that trade-off in fact you lose a shit ton of dpm but what is even good about it the torps they're better than kaba torps for sure kaba only has like what six camp torps or something so the kaba torps are more usable the problem is you just don't do any damage in the dark that's really your key issue you do so fucking little damage like your, your ap isn't anything special either you start less fires per minute than a fucking elbing i'm not even joking you start less fires per, per minute than an elbing and the only like you 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 do no damage and if you don't get fires in it you're just screwed but your fire chance is is eight percent on a five second base reload it's it's garbage just garbage you're an he spammer that can't start fires it's... honestly i think i'm just gonna throw it i don't I, i've never been afraid of Del. i've never seen delny as a threat uh i think i'm just gonna throw it in here it, it's kind of like a trade-off it's like a kaba light it still sucks but it's kind of like a kaba light small and easiest here it's the original broken ship that they removed because they said oh well first they first they released black and then they realized wow radar and dd is kind of overpowered we should remove it and then they released small and they were like oh well what do you know radar and dd is still broken uh, this one has heal and speed boost as well a little amount uh we should probably remove it uh and then they added ragnar that does the exact the same thing and they were like wow ragnar seems to be overperforming uh, this is a bit bad then they added Gnansk. <laughs> it's like <laughs> okay cool very cool very cool very cool uh so yeah small and obviously fucking stupid like just super super stupid ship like uh, uh what, what what is there to say is this 6.8 conceal with yeah 6.8 conceal um our build seems fine on what we're running but of course your, the speed is misleading it's actually 36.8 and then we have the 30 percent speed boost that we can pop at any point that turns us into a fucking rocket we got the heals, we got the 7.5 km, 22 second radar, and then on top of this, uh, the gun angles are pretty damn nice. The torpedoes are basically hull on torps, you're launching 80 knot torpedoes, and your damage output is completely absurd because you got a 1.5 second reload on it. It's it's just it's it's an eight it's a, it's a radar destroyer that has more HE DPM than a Harabu while at the same time being much more agile uh having a heal being much more stealthy but it has more hedpm than harobomo and it has a radar yeah it's uh it's it's really fucking stupid it's really fucking stupid it's obviously a, there's a reason why it's permaban from everything whenever there's anything resembling competitive it's stupid it's it's completely overpowered trump trump I actually like Trump. I played Trump a fair bit. Trump is probably B tier for me. I'd put Trump into A tier if the firing angles were better. The biggest issue on the Trump is that the firing angles when kiting are really, really garbage. Uh, but Trump has this thing where it's really obnoxious to push into a Trump because Trump has airstrikes. So even if you get a Trump low HP, he will be torping you all the time and his torps are actually pretty fast. Uh, they're really obnoxious. He's just going to be cycling. Oh, shit, I have it. Oh, no, there I have it. He's going to be cycling these torpedoes 24-7. They do 71 knots. They do 15k each. And they got a 70-second reload. The problem is, of course, it's one on each side. So you can only launch three and you have to turn around. But basically, he's he's dropping them all the time. It's it's about a minute cooldown with AR. And uh, you drop one side, then you turn, drop the other, then you drop the other. So every 30 seconds, you got torps coming your way. And then he's dropping the airstrikes as well. So you got floods and fires 24-7. And if you don't get him a low HP, he's also going to be gunboating on top of it. And it's, he's got pretty good fire chance at 11%, which is honestly really high for a destroyer. The big issue really is that the firing angles when kiting are garbage. They're really bad. You have to give a ton of broadside to use them. Um, and obviously you don't have any smoke on it. And you're heavily reliant on the speed boost. To keep your speed up because your speed with the flag is 35 which makes you one of the slowest destroyers in the game which is a big fucking weakness so 
it has a set of very clear strengths and very clear clear weaknesses. Um, the helpful one it is really good. Twenty eight with with Ruter, put it running running, farming build. You get really good firing range as well, so you can sit basically across the map farming twenty four seven. It's got, I would say, clear strengths, but and its conceal is actually pretty good. The issue really is you're you're kind of stuck going nose in if you want to trade well. Otherwise, you have to give a lot of broadside. And a complete lack of fires kind of fucks it. I'd say it's a really strong B. Or a strong B, but I don't think it's quite an A. I think it's a strong B, but not quite A. Uh, from, it doesn't quite reach it. Because, yeah, it's got that fire chance, but the HEDPM is actually pretty bad on it. Like, the HEDPM is almost submerged levels. The bombs, of course, make up for it. But the torps are very hit and miss because you only get three of them each if you're trying to drop someone with hydro you're not even going to put any pressure on them he just slows down a bit and he dodges it accelerates a bit dodges it um it's it's good trump is good i like the ship and it's a unique play style um but i don't think it's quite the a tier for me in fact fighting against the trump if i'm a destroyer i'm not particularly afraid of the thing because He's very easy to outtrade, and uh, if you for if you force him to kite away, he's basically flat forced to give you a flat broadside. So, most of the time, I don't really see him as that big of a threat to deal with. I think it was pretty thick as well. Yeah, it's pretty huge. It eats. It's basically this big. It's more of a cruiser size than destroyer size, so it eats a fair amount of chunky damage. It's only got ninety millimeter, um, ninety millimeter armor, but like if you compare the size of the Trump to well, we can't just put a daring here. It's it doesn't have the huge, huge profile of the Trump. Trump is a big chunky ship. There's more armor inside. Is that how it worked? Oh yeah, shit! It had this thing that armed. Fuck! I forgot about this. Well, because it was supposed to be like a citadel. I think it was supposed to be a citadel. Yeah, this is actually really bad. This is like the worst of both worlds. If if your armor is external. You have a chance of shattering HE, but this is internal armor. So the HE is going to pen this, but the AP is going to arm on this. That's why it needs so much extra damage. Yeah, now this is actually a huge weakness, because uh, anyone who has shorter fuse on their AP is going to lo love shooting Trump. That's why it takes so much chunky damage. Yeah, no, I think B is pretty... It's a strong B. I think that's pretty solid. Vampire 2? That's probably an A tier for me. It's... Really good at contesting caps, uh, map control against enemy DDs. It suffers against radar ships generally, but with the exception of those, Vampire is pretty good at just exerting map control wherever it goes. Um, pretty good health pool on it, really good conceal at 5.8. It's pretty slow at 35, but it's got this unique combination of a crawling smoke and a 5 kilometer hydro. So you just you can just crawl into caps with smoke and hydro running, and if you don't have a radar to help you, you just have to give it up. You you can't fight it. You you can't you can't fight it. It's uh, it's just a pain in the ass to deal with. It, it's just gonna bully you away from it. DPM wise, he does it does really good damage. Uh, Vampire is one of the highest DPS ships in the game. So if you do, even if you manage to catch it outside of the smoke or outside of the hydro combination, you might still just straight up out trade you with these guns. I don't remember. Did it also get Daring's improved AP pen? Yeah, that it gets Daring's improved AP angle, so it can shoot low AP as well and shit on you with that. So Vampire is just a strong ship. Vampire is just objectively a strong ship. The biggest weaknesses uh, on on the ship is uh, it only gets one set of torpedoes. And they have a pretty damn long cooldown. So your torpedo power is very, very lacking. Uh, and the other big issue is while the crawling smoke is really nice and useful, it has a massive cooldown. And unlike normal smokes, um, you, this cooldown on this smoke only starts after the consumable action time ends. So in other DDs, if you pop your smoke, you can sit in your smoke for maybe a minute, a minute and a half, while your smoke ticks off cooldown. The problem with Vampire is... The smoke only starts sticking on cooldown after the last puff has been deployed, which means you're basically two minutes completely out of smoke when you use this ship. And that shit can fuck you up. 
And also, because in World Warships you can't turn off the crawling smoke generator, if you use the smoke to contest the cap, or to force the DD out of the cap, for two minutes you're leaving smoke puffs behind. So you're extremely easy to track, you're extremely easy to know where you're going, it's very easy to see where, where you're moving, because you're just puffing along like fucking Thomas the Tank Engine across the map. So, it, it, there's a reason why it is an S, and that's mostly the consumables and the torpedo power. Everything else on the ship is pretty nice. Everything else on the ship is pretty nice. It's uh, a pretty comfortable ship besides though. If Wargaming ever implements it, that you can turn this off at will, uh, that would probably help it quite a bit, but uh, it, it can be... It can screw you over with the, with the smoke train shit. I just went full smoke train on Vampire 2, but it's super awkward. Yeah, it can be really awkward. If, 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 like, if the enemy pushes in on your flank and you get to just puff puff away and farm the entire time, that's brilliant. That, it, it's basically S tier when you get to do that, because they can't, they can't push you with DDs if they don't have radar, because you got Hydro, and you can just slowly crawl around farming everyone with your guns, with your massive DPM. That's brilliant. But then, when they just see you and they run away... And then you puff puff along after them in your smoke train ship. It's it's just it's not that scary. It's kind of garbage. It's kind of garbage. Um, Alvaro de Bazan. That thing has neither. Re it's a gunboat that has neither really HE or AP DPM. Um, I think the AP had something going for it. The AP pen was it was a bit better. It was maybe it was Lucian Grosovoy pen. But it's huge, it's clunky. Uh, what was the turning on it? 730 isn't that bad. It's just the detection is mm, 76. I mean, it could be worse. It's not brilliant either. It's got all the health, it's pretty fast. I think the bigger issue really is the lack of damage on it. Lack of damage on it is an issue. In terms of consumables, it's got three standard smokes and a speed boost, and that's pretty much it. Why so many teams using gearings and Hollands in cots? If according to your position, there are better DDs, Hollands in cots. What? Also, uh, in cots, a lot of ships are banned. There's a whole list of banned ships. Like, also, randoms is nothing like comp. Comparing randoms and comp is the dumbest thing you can possibly do. In random, in comp, you build a bunch of super tanky builds where you can't get killed because that's how you win. You win by not dying. In randoms, you build damage because you win by killing the enemy. It's it's completely different. And gearing, for example, is is used because it lays a, an absurd amount of smoke, which is really really useful in, in competitive. But in random, smoking up your teammate who then runs out of the smoke is completely irrelevant. It's uh, but God, what? Holland? Huh? As for bans, let's see which which ships are actually banned in cots uh, of our destroyers. Well, limited ones are Lucian, Kleber, uh, Smallland. Well, actually, no, they're just banned. You can bring zero of them. They're completely permanently banned. Smurfs, probably because you have to buy them. Uh, limited ones are Gdansk. Kleber, Marceau, Ragnar. And Gdansk, Marceau, Ragnar is limited a second time, so you can't bring more of any of these at the time. So why do you, don't you see them in GOTS? Probably because they're limited or banned all the time. Which team uses Holland in GOTS, though? I'd, I'd, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see the reasoning for that. I've never even heard of a team running Holland in GOTS. I would love to see that. Who, who does that? Why on earth would you even do that? NA does it, really? NA does Holland. Wow. What's the reasoning for it? It's NA diff different for the questions. <laughs> but but I love to see I love to hear a reasoning for it, considering how many DDs there are to choose. Choosing Holland. I don't know. But yeah, uh, where were we? Alvaro de Bazan. 
Honestly, that ship does no damage. That's really my main issue. Um, does it start any fires? Not really. It's actually pretty shit. It's like Grozovoy. Uh, it's got a smoke. What the hell does that ship have going for it? I mean, it's, it's decently agile, decently fast. Shit, this is one of those ships I, I should replay to get a feel for what the hell I'm talking about, but it doesn't really have torpedo damage either. The DPM is A. 56 not torps in the age of hydro? Jesus, that's garbage. It has the burst. It has the funny button. Maybe we put it in into a C tier? I fought Albada the Bazans and they never scared me. I always feel like they die. Maybe we put it in here because it, it's a gunboat that can burst, but I need to replay it. That's really it. Harugumo. Absolutely massive damage output. Uh, built built in pen, so you can opt to not build uh, IFHE. You just bend thir pen 30 millimeters and you just start an absurd amount of fires. The issues with it is it's big and clunky. Hello, Ansanchi Guth. Mm. Uh, the torps on Aragumo, they're the 12km uh, 6 tuple torps, which have a massive spread, even in a narrow spread. So they are they can do big alpha, but they're eh, you need torpedo reload booster to get wood vol vol off. Leg mod Haru is a different beast, um, but that's once again, leg mod Haru is something you would run in, in comp. Wait, why don't I have a Haruguma here? I must be resetting the line. If there's no other, I must be resetting the line, because I played so much Haruguma. Yeah, we're, we're resetting the line. That's what's happening. How many stacks do we have? Only two. But, uh, like, the only reason you run leg mod Haru is for team play. You get an extra smoke, and you get more smoke time on it. Um, you make this massive, gigantic smoke train. But this is the kind of shit you run in divisions. You run it in, you run it in comp to smoke things up. But uh, in randoms, it's kind of shit. Because you're giving up concealment, which you already fucking suffer from. I would not want to sail around in a 7.7 game conceal uh, huddle. Now, mostly I used to build it full gunboat, which is like no concealment from captain points, and just go farm build with AFT and uh, just farm, farm, farm. Issues on it is really the prevalence of radar ships, which is a pain in the ass. And the fact that it's a huge clunky ship that can get torped in the smoke pretty easily. But even so, the raw damage output on the ship is fucking absurd. It just does so much damage, and if you position... It's like a cruiser without a citadel in that sense. Um, honestly, for, for me, I think I think that if you go with strength, it has to be... I would absolutely put it in A. Haruguma is just too good at just dealing damage. It's just too good at dealing damage. The, the thing is, though... This is for randoms, and I mean, the problem is if you fight another gunboat in Haruguma, it kind of depends on the distance. And if you fight radar ships, you generally get dumpstered. It depends, skill issue, of course, but in general, just for farming in randoms, Haruguma still does absurd damage. Just does absurd damage. The problem is, of course, when you run into these fuckers, that's when it gets hard. Druid's big issue is really the turrets, but that's kind of RNG. It's like, yeah, the Druid has no armor on the turrets, though. I think we have it on... Can we have it on this account? It had something ridiculous on the turrets. The turrets were like 13 millimeter or something. 15. 15 and 10. The issue is losing these fucking sucks. Absolutely sucks. But... On the other, on the flip side, if you don't lose them, you dumpster things because your shell ballistics on the on the ship are actually insane. Like the shell ballistics on on on, uh, on the druid are really really good, and the pen is surprisingly good as well. Druid, druid has better shell velocity than uh, Forrest Sherman. Shit, it's got better shell velocity than Ragnar, and Ragnar is known for its good shell velocity. Who's the boy? Shit, I played it recently. God, it feels it feels like a relic. It feels like such a relic in the current state of the game. 
Yeah, it comes with two consumables each. So if you don't build superintendent, you're basically done after playing using two smokes and two heals. So you have to build superintendent on it, which is not something you generally need to do on most other DDs. Um, the, the gun, it's still a decent farmer, but man, it feels huge and clunky and awkward. It's it's not the ship that I remember. I put, and the AA power that once had, that shit is long gone. A, no fucking way do I put Grozovoy into A. Not for me, at least. It doesn't come close to A. I'm not even sure if I want to put it in B. It might be a strong C for me, the Grozovoy. Like, have you guys actually played the Grozovoy recently? I played it recently, and it fucking sucked. The firing angles were not good. The ship was huge, clunky, ate damage from everywhere. Uh, it, it's really the biggest benefit was the flat arcs and the heal, but the consumables are stupidly limited. The damage output, which I once considered to be like, well, Grosso does pretty good damage, is, is nothing really impressive. It's like lower than middle of the pack. It's very easy to hit as well, because it's fucking gigantic. Like, Grosso is a huge ship. Look at the ship. It's a, it's a huge fucking cruiser of a ship. And the biggest, my, what I hate most is the fact that you, everything is two. You get two consumables each. So superintendent is mandatory or you're fucked. What are we running? Leg mod on it? Leg mod is pretty nice on it. I guess you could get some decent reload with the leg mod on it. What we're running? Leg mod plus... Yeah, no concealed farming. This looks like no concealed farming. Grosso. That makes some sense. But even then, the issue is still fucking huge. It's still huge, and it tends to eat a lot of shit. With Conceal, you still get to 6km. I don't know, man. Oh, it's 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 the shitty smokes as well. It's the shitty smokes. Last 97, 160 second cooldown. Eh. Eh. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll tentatively put it as a very weak B. Very weak B, if I put it. I don't particularly like the Grosso Boy. Mostly for the leg mod I put it here. If for, without leg mod, I'd probably put it into C. Elbing. Elbing is a complete trash destroyer. Let's be honest, Elbing is trash at anything a DD needs to do. Elbing is garbage at being a destroyer. You need to cap something, Elbing sucks. You need to spot something, Elbing sucks. You need to quickly push a flank, Elbing sucks. You need to stop a push, Elbing sucks. Elbing is this dumb damage farmer that somehow works out pretty well for me, especially on NA, because people keep trying to take fights with... Other DDs keep trying to take fights with you in the Elbing, and then you just shit on them because they keep shooting HE at your belt. But that's mostly people being idiots, it's not the ship being good. Uh, like, if, if this was a cruiser tier list, Elbing would probably place higher, because there it's like a pretty good damage farmer without a citadel. But in destroyer list, it's like a C tier. It's like C tier. It's not as bad as the D ones. In fact, I can fight all of these in Elbing and dumpster them easily. But uh, 6k per AP volume on a DD, if he gives you the perfect angle. Yes, if he gives you that perfect angle where he's just angled enough that it arms uh, without bouncing and without overpanning. Then yeah, yeah, you can get big damage in on it. But then if you're sailing, fighting someone who's either going nose in, you're doing zero damage. Or doing flat broadside, you're doing zero damage. So, Elbing wins versus Kaba. Elbing actually shits on the Kaba pretty easily. Uh, how can Gross Avoid be above gearing for randoms? I fucking hate gearing. Have you played gearing solo in randoms lately? It sucks. It's such an awful experience. I played it on NA with Citizen. It was fucking awful. But yeah, Elbing, I'll, I'll put it in, in C. I think it's a fun ship. I think it's a good ship. But as a destroyer, it's, it's shit. It's shit that doing DD rolls. Z42. Sorry, no, Z52. Z52. Uh, 
Bro, it's it's so matchmaking dependent. It's it's so like like if you run into a bunch of destroyers that don't have radar or then you got a pretty good chance of being pretty strong. And if there's if you get a map where you can park next to an island and just hydro everything, it's got pretty good carry power. But f fuck me if you if you have to fight anything anything radarish or if you get caught outside of your smoke, you're so garbage. It's so map and and lineup dependent. But man, the damage on it is a tragedy. I mean, the thing with Z52 though that people still fuck up though is people don't shoot AP in it. If you shoot AP on broadsides, you do a fair bit of damage on it. But uh, it kind of has the same issue though where people have to give you broadside. Because uh, the Z52 is, is kind of cringe in the sense that the AP arming time on it is, uh, I think it was 21 or 22. Uh, I should, can't see AP arm time here. AP, let's see, one second. AP arming time is, uh, threshold is 21. Yeah, it's 21 millimeters. And uh, most destroyers in the game have 19 millimeters of armor. So you end up in this cringe situation that if you're shooting broadsides with Z52, that the AP doesn't arm. It punches straight through. So you, it's, when, when ships are a bit angled, the Z52 AP is brilliant. But then if they're too, too angled, you don't have improved pen angles, so you don't do any damage. So if, if you manage to get that optimal angle, you can do really good damage. Uh, and if you're fighting tankier ships, you can actually do really good damage. But very situational. What is, wait, why is our concealed so bad? What are we running? Oh, we're farming Z52. This is, this is like NA52 build almost. We're running full farm. With conceal, you get what? Six, one, six, two. Was it six, two conceal? It used to be. No, it's 6-1. You get 6-1 conceal. So you can kind of push in with the Hydro. That's a hard chip to put. In A52, yeah. It's so dependent. I, I, I think I'm going to put it as a really weak B. It, it's so map dependent. It's so map dependent. If, if, you can't use your, if you can't use your Hydro smoke gimmick, or if you can't use your Hydro gimmick, it's, it's almost a D tier ship. In terms of fucking damage output and utility. Your torps are eh. Your gun power is eh. Uh, but if you get to use your gimmick. Then you're actually a pretty strong cap contester. So it's it's all over the place. Daring is A. Daring is an A tier for sure. Uh, I think it's actually better than the vampire. Vampire's hydro is nice. But daring is just too consistent. At, at kind of doing everything. Daring's fast reloading smoke and heal and short hydro. It's just so good at fighting everything in the game. Like the only thing it suffers really against this is, is the S tier apes. Against everything else, I'd rather pick a Daring. I feel like I can kill everything else pretty comfort comfortably in the Daring. A Druid might be a bit of an RNG fiesta, but generally speaking, everything else I feel pretty confident about. So Bear is an S tier, pretty easy S tier. Um what is this say? French speed, French saturation, uh, really flat arcs, reload booster, AP pin is good enough to actually Citadel cruisers, light cruisers at even 10 kilometers. Um, torpedoes are extremely good with great angles, massive alpha, they're really fast. It's It's got a shit ton going for it. It's just really good. It's really good. Uh, Regola. Oh, uh, this, this is one of those situations where I fucking hate the Regola. I don't think actually Regola is that bad. Regola, Regola, in particular, in Divisions is really good. If you play in Divisions, Regola is great. Because you can play like two destroyers and Regola smoking up and just free farming while it happens. But when I play this thing solo, I just fucking hate it. I just hate it. I, it might just be a skill issue, honestly. It might just be a skill issue. I'm not good enough to utilize that thing. But but I don't like the Regolo. The SAP DPM on it is really nuts if you get to use it, though. Like, it, it can probably almost outgun basically anything. And it's got that somewhat longer reload. 
but does these massive sap salvos. Uh, I think the torpedoes were pretty shit on it. Do we have it here somewhere? Where's your ball? Here. The torpedoes were garbage. They're 56 knots, which basically means irrelevant in today's method with everyone running hydro. Um, it's gigantic as well. We need to highlight the fact that Pregolo is huge. It's absolutely fucking massive. Uh, so, in a way, the health pool on it is a bit misleading because you don't have saturation and you just did massive damage from everything. Uh, but it's fast as shit. It's fast as shit. You get pretty damn good conceal on it. You get that super speed boost and of course you get the exhaust smoke so you can run around either gunning or torpedoing. It's a good ship, I just don't like it. To be fair, I haven't played it that- I used to play it before they buffed the range. I don't know how many of you remember old Regola, but old Regola used to have like 10k range or something. It used to be so garbage. Uh, I'd say it's better now that it has a bit more range utility going for it. 7.2 conceal though, even with full conceal build, is complete trash. So, mostly in the Regola, you need people to fight you, or you need someone else to spot for you. Those are the big weaknesses. If you get to like just fight another DD in the open, for some reason the DD decides to shoot you. That happens sometimes, DDs just decide, I want to kill myself. Uh, it's really good then. It's really good if you get to take those fights. But most of the time, the 7.2 cam conceal buffer means trying to rush down DDs fucking sucks. And uh, if you don't have someone spotting for you or the enemy doesn't take a fight with you, you're kind of just sitting around farming with 11.5k with range, which is... Eh. Yeah, you can't shoot the German BBS before you get Sansonet. Yeah, Sansonet is kind of mandatory on it as well. Um, I think a lot of people aren't going to like the fact that I'm going to put it in B because I don't like playing it. But, I mean, it's my list. I, I think in, in good hands, it's, 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 I think it has more carry potential than these, but I just don't fucking like playing this thing. I, I really don't like playing this thing. Where would we put it? Somewhere here, maybe. I, I, I really don't. I, I see the strengths that it has. I just don't like it. I don't like it. I think if you play in a division, you're probably going to put Regola a lot higher. Because it gets so much stronger in a division. But as someone who basically plays only solo, I f don't like Regola at all. Mm. Why, why? It's a radar ship, so clearly it's S tier. Um, and ironically, uh, Smoke YY is probably better than Radar, but Radar is more fun. It's kind of troll, but the Torps are deep water, and you got pretty okay gunpowder. They buffed it a lot. It used to be a lot worse. They gave it a lot of buffs. But that doesn't mean the DPM is impressive. The AP is basically a joke. Rarely a reason to use the AP. The HE DPM is bad in every possible way. The main gimmick is the torpedoes, but uh, everyone has Hydra nowadays. I mean, if, if you're going to do anything, you're going to do leg mod YY, the ship. So this, this gives you like this massive damage boost. You can run this with... I've, I've been running Radar YY with this build. Where you get the reload and the Radar duration and then more reload. And it's been pretty good because the Radar is actually really long duration. It's 7.5. But, 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 but even then, even with this thing running, your DPM is actually not that impressive. Like, you're, D you're buffing your DPM by, what, 18 and 12%? It's still not going to be impressive. I I'm pretty sure you don't even reach gearing DPM with, with all this shit running. I'd be surprised if you actually reach gearing DPM with all this shit running. It might still not be enough to reach gearing. So, and, and you're helpful with survivability expert is 22. And if you run radar, you sure as fuck don't have a smoke. You don't have the conceal. You're not particularly fast. Your biggest advantage is the torps with the deep water, but I don't know. It's it's a hard one. 
It kind of depends. The problem is also, but at least at least YY deportors, they did hit cruisers. It's, got, it's not the Sasha deporters, so they are more useful. Do I want to put it in as a weak B or a C? It's just not very good. It's just not very good. Why not play Torp build with smoke? Because you don't want generally you don't want to rely on Torps in today's meta. Every new ship in the game has Hydro, every battleship has Hydro. They have speed boost and Hydros left, right, and center. Shit, you might even be torping right over the or a submarine and you don't see it, and then the sub spots all your torps. It's like it, it, there's so many fucking ways to just screw you over. Hmm. I don't know. Honestly, I'm just going to go based on what I like. I don't like it. I don't like playing it right now, so I'm going to put it in the same. Shimakaze. Well, it's better than these dumpster fires in D. Um, it's still pretty garbage, but... It's got surprisingly decent guns. Because people... That people never fucking use for some reason. But mostly because of the alpha, not the DPM. The DPM is shit. It's got good conceal. We should put an SS tier up here and put Shima here, just to make people spam Shimas 24-7 in every game. But uh, it's fully a torpedo boat with, with questionable torpedoes. I'd say it's more of a destroyer than Elving, but that, that's about as much as I can put. That's probably where I'd put it on, unironically. That would probably be my DD tier list. That would probably be my DD tier list. In terms of how much I enjoy playing some of this, Elbing is S. I think it's hilarious and it's super fun. Um, Druid, I think, is pretty fucking boring to play, and I'd probably put it in D in terms of fun to play. But um, in terms of where I consider their, their strengths in randoms, roughly. Roughly. I still remember Flola was moving with F3 Shima and Total Crash. Bro, I played a 20 game Shima game on EU, and. Uh, it got age restricted by YouTube. It's still age restricted as uh, still. Sh Sherman fun. Sherman is hilariously fun, mostly because it's so obscene. It's so obscene. You just and it's very chill. It's kind of like Elbing. You you kind of chill in your smoke and you farm. But unlike Elbing, that might actually get torpedoed in the smoke, so you have to care about that. Sherman is hydro, so you can literally like you can literally fucking stick your finger up your nose and just sit there farming with Sherman without the worry in the world. It's it's really stupid. Are we missing any DDs? I don't think so. We might be. I don't know if we're missing any DDs. This is randoms. This is for randoms. Which will be the best in torpedo and gunboat? Depends on what you're shooting. <laughs> Depends on what you're shooting. But yeah, no. That's probably where I sit. I might change my mind on, on many of these in the middle. I probably won't change my mind on the D tier. I think they're all shit. I probably won't change my mind on any of the S tier. I think they're all broken. Uh, but uh, the middle pack might move depending on my mood. But that's basically my tier list. 